Oh, I remember those lads very well. Well, like many musicians throughout the lockdown, Mark has had to get very creative from home, and he's not only been making music videos in his living room, but writing lots of new music. And I caught up with Mark and wanted to know more about his new song, Stop the Show, which has a bit of a greatest showman kind of vibe to it. Greatest showman? What's that? I've, I've never heard of that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, I can't really hide it, can I? It's pretty, it's pretty out there. It's all over it. Thing is, is I felt like there's been enough time passed so people are no longer sick of it. And there's obviously going to be an, an inevitable sequel, no doubt. So I think there's going to be Greatest Showman mania for a long time to come. So I thought, why not jump on that bandwagon? But there was a little bit more behind it. There's a little bit more meaning behind the song, which I think is a little bit more current and relevant to what's been going on in the, the past year. Yeah. And how's the past year been for you? Ooh, it's, it's a strange thing to all of a sudden just, you know, scrap 50 gigs in the diary. Oh, well, they're not happening anymore. It's a very strange thing because you think, well, hang on. We're, I know everybody's been affected in the same way. And obviously, I, you know, send out all my you know, thoughts to anybody who has been massively affected. But it was strange losing all of our gigs. And we're just looking at rescheduling them and for this coming year and next year as well. But I think there's just going to be such a backlog of bands getting out there back on the road again. It's, it's just going to be gigs every night of the week. I know. Hopefully. I know. Well, I, I heard a while ago that somebody kind of referred to this as possibly the roaring 20s of the, of the 2020s. <laughs> it was supposed to be. And I was thinking to myself, actually, that's really not like a bad shout because, you know, I mean, first of all, I might have to find myself a, a new age flap address. But I can yeah. totally see when people get back out there, it's already kind of starting to happen a little bit, you mm. know? I mean, I know you've got a book to go to bars and restaurants and, yeah. and the theatre, but I think people... People are really, really desperate to go to shows. Yeah. Wasn't there a really bad depression in the 20s? I'm not sure if we really want it to be the roaring 20s again. Um, <laughs> Maybe but, it, might, it, might, it might be roaring for the for the arts and theatre and, and, and the, the creative sector, shall we say. Oh, yes, let's hope so. I think it will be. And I think when you, when you kind of lock people away in a lockdown, creative people, as you probably know yourself, you just kind of have this boom where you, you have to get your creativity out there in some way. So you just have to find new ways to do it. So, so... I found myself writing a lot more songs at home and uh, certainly for a time, once we hit that third lockdown, I think that's when I kind of hit my wall because it had just been too long. And I think all my creativity and my enthusiasm was kind of spent. But fortunately, in the time that I was writing, I wrote this song, Stop the Show. So yeah, so it's, it's been a strange time, but I think creatives will always find a way to, to you know, put it out there. Definitely. And have you been learning any other new skills? Have you how much how have you perfected your banana bread? No. <laughs> <laughs> Or any kind of bread. Um, in terms of uh, cooking, I, I've not really, I, I've probably done a little bit more cooking than I would have done previously because I'm just home on my own all the time and uh, getting a little bit more creative in that department. But mostly it's just been learning how to, to make a music video, for example, because previously you would be able to go out on location, you could film it and you can get a team on board. And I know people can do that again now, but back when I've been working on you know new songs, I'm, I'm just having to learn how to do it all myself. Self. So uh, all of a sudden it's swatting up on Final Cut and all these kind of editing software. And um, so I've made the video for Stop the Show uh, from my living room. Wow. And I know people are thinking, oh my goodness, what's that going to be like? But it's better than it sounds. No, it sounds great. And, and I think as well, you know, you could add director to your, to your list of talents as well. Do you think maybe music videos are something you'd like to go into? Knowing the hours and the, the blood, sweat and tears that have gone into this one, I'm not, uh, and bearing in mind, obviously, uh, I'm not getting paid to do it, obviously, because it's all for myself. I might be interested in doing that somewhere down the line. We'll sh we shall see. Let's see how this goes down. But I pretty much turned my living room into a green screen studio. Oh, wow. Uh, so green everywhere. And uh, so, so hopefully when the video is done, I will be on stage in a theatre in my mind. Yeah, because probably hopefully. on stage is where you feel most comfortable. Yeah, even a, even a virtual one. Yeah, Because exactly. this past year, we've done a ton of virtual concerts. A1, the band have done a lot of virtual concerts. So it's been nice that we've still been able to connect with our fans, even, you know, in these strange sort of unpredictable times. Yeah, I was going to ask, because, you know, obviously A1, absolutely, you know, they were I mean, massive, absolutely massive. Well, you guys were like huge. And was it the Philippines that you guys were absolutely like bombarded with fans? Yeah, it's manic over there in any part of Southeast Asia, the Philippines, Indonesia, yeah. Singapore, and it still is to this day, which is incredible. I mean, 
Back in the day, we, we couldn't go anywhere without there being a whole kind of cavalcade of vehicles following us around everywhere. So it would be ourselves surrounded by buses of fans following us. And then if we took a boat, they'd take a boat. And and, and it would be something out of a, a James Bond movie. It was just, or, or even like a Beatles movie. It was just totally manic over there. But we absolutely love our fans in the Philippines and, and, and Southeast Asia. And we're very grateful that they still give us the opportunity to do what we've been doing for like 20 years now. Yeah. And same in the UK. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're still traveling. We've got a tour coming up later in the year, uh, which is called the A-Game Tour. Ooh. And I'm sure we'll be coming to your neck of the woods. That's for sure. Fabulous. Love Newcastle. We love coming to Newcastle. We have the best time there. Yeah, we're, we're canny up here. We're nice. So tell us about the live <laughs> online shows. That, that must be really surreal to sort of perform over like Zoom. It is when you have everybody on screen, but it's so charming. It's so sweet because you get everybody on screen. And everybody's in their living rooms and you're just seeing what everybody's up to. And it's just totally different. It, it, I can't really compare it to anything. Obviously, you can't compare it to live and in person. That's always going to be the best way to perform for your fans. But in these times, it's been it's been a bit of a lifeline for us as a band and also for our fans to kind of still connect with them. And I gather a lot of bands have done the kind of the virtual concerts. And, you know, Zoom before last year, I barely even heard of Zoom. I know. Now Zoom is everyone's best friend. We're on it all the time. I know. And there's always that person who still managed to be on mute all the time. And you're like, you're on mute. Someone, someone <laughs> yes. needs to put that on a T-shirt. Yes, that's probably me. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was definitely me at the start of this interview. Uh, Mark Reed there from the boy band A1. Such a nice guy. We'll be hearing more from him in the next 10 minutes. It's Kai Goldie's boy band A1. Uh, they had massive success with their track Caught in the Middle, same old brand new you, and who can forget the cover of Aha's Take On Me? Love it. Uh, well, like many musicians who haven't been able to perform during the pandemic, Mark has been busy writing new solo music as well as a brand new album for A1. Uh, now, Mark, you've been pretty busy writing new music. In the last year, you released uh, Where Were You When the World Stopped, which is going to be, well, quite the time capsule in the future. So have you found that the pandemic has changed the way that you write at all? You're absolutely right. It really has changed how I think about songwriting because something like this happens in the world and you all of a sudden well i don't really want to just write songs about being the first to believe and kind of fun trivial love songs and you know I, i'm referring to some of the a1 back catalog of course and i think it's important as you get older to write about things that actually mean something and i was certainly compelled to write where were you when the world stopped and it was it was again like stop the show it was very much on the nose about what was going on in the world. So as you say, it's nice to hear you say it is like a time capsule when people will look back and hear that song and they go, oh, wow, what was that all about? You know, years from now, hopefully people are still listening to it. And the same, we've stopped the show. I felt like there were so many people like me who are out, suddenly find themselves out of work. And I just wanted this to be a bit of an anthem for those people to emphasize that, you know, the curtain ain't coming down. Let everyone know that we're back in town. And how are the rest of the band doing? Are they OK? Have, the, have you managed to see each other during the lockdown or has it all been just virtually? Mostly virtually, but we actually did do a, uh, a gig in Singapore, a, a virtual gig, where two of us were able to get together. So Ben and uh, Christian got together in Norway, because mm -hmm. Ben actually lives in Norway now, and myself and Paul, and Paul lives in Newcastle, so okay. he travelled down and uh, came to mine and it was all very you know socially distanced and all done properly and we filmed we filmed a concert and then put the two videos together and sent that over to singapore and that was fantastic but other than that we've not seen too much of each other but we're hoping once the restrictions are completely lifted we'll be, i'll be able to get over to norway again and, and and see the chaps 20 years ago you know i know the band's still going strong and, and very much a, a massive massive support especially like you said in the far east you know but 20 years yeah. ago i mean one of the biggest british boy bands i remember you very well well, I, I'm, I, I won't lie, I did have a poster in my bedroom. <laughs> hey! <laughs> So, it mean, didn't have darts in it, did it? No, no, um, no, not at all. I loved you guys, and I, I loved, don't laugh, I loved Hanson as well. Hanson were one of my favourite wow. bands. I loved Bob, them. Oh, baby, um, Bob. Yeah, they were Love great. It. I thought they were just really they sweet. I actually went to see them a few years ago with my sister. We weren't bearing in mind. Are they still going strong? They are, they are still going strong. Brilliant. And um, yeah, it was quite funny being a sort of like nearly 30 year old woman and like screaming <laughs> and being like, yeah, I love you guys. So I'm Nothing curious. Wrong with that. I'm curious, like, you know, has, has your fan, obviously your fan base has grown up, but is there still that element of 
of screaming girls when they see you live, you know, and, and you're performing. Because I think there's probably like a lot of nostalgia. People maybe revert back mm. to when they're young. But, you know, is, is it a bit more tame now, a bit more mellowed? I'd like to say it is, but it's not, you know, <laughs> um, because when you go to that show, you know, whatever, where we had a reunion tour a couple of years back when Paul rejoined the band. When people come into that venue, it is like a, a, a you know, a time machine. And it takes them right back to when they were like like you go and see Hanson. It takes you back to when you saw them when you were much younger. And I think because it kind of sends you back to a simpler time in your life, it, you just let all your inhibitions go and you just go for it. And OK, so maybe the screams aren't quite as loud or are quite as high pitched. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, back in the day, wow, they used to record the decibels of these screams and you you wouldn't be able to hear much of the music. It was just like a, wow, it was quite a sound. Um, so, yeah, it's a tiny bit more subdued now, but still really wild. And, and, and I think, as I said, I think it's just going back to your youth uh, for one night only. It's great. Yeah, I can't even begin to imagine what it must be like. Stand on a stage, thousands of girls in front of you just screaming. I bet, I bet that was a good time. But you thought, yeah, this is not. I like, I like my job. It's good. Yeah, I think the thing is, is you <laughs> kind of get a little bit too used to it. So then, when it doesn't happen, you're like, I don't know what I'm going to do now because that is such a high to be taken on. In in you know, a lot of these young guys and young girls that, that join bands and pop bands, they kind of experience these tremendous highs. And then when it all stops, it's like the massive low. I'm sorry to bring the tone down, but it's like major lows. Mm. And then it's kind of like an adjustment of how you carry on and, and, and just adapt to, because, you know, once you perform to several thousand and hundreds of thousands of people, it's kind of, it is hard to go back to the smaller gigs. But yeah. at the end of the day, as a musician, as a performer, I just love to play. And I'm happy to play whether there's 10 people in the room or 10,000 people in the room. So, Mark, what, what else is uh, coming up for you? Have you got any other things in the pipeline? Line. Other than uh, stop the show, um, which I'm I'm really proud of, and I, and, and I I hadn't planned on releasing th this. I was going to hold it back, but I felt like you know what, the time is right. The time is now, as as all the theatres are opening, all the music venues are opening up again. So it felt like the perfect time to release this song. Other than that, I'm you know going to get back to the A1 album that we we've been working on for quite some time now, but haven't been able to complete. So there's an A1 album. I even have like a a, a YouTube show as well called Nerd Person Perspective, mm -hmm. which which is me nerding out over all kind of things like toys and collectibles. And that's very nostalgia driven as well, because, uh, you know, I'm a collector of a lot of toys from my my youth. Uh, so, yeah, that's a bit bit bonkers. And other than that, yeah, just getting in the studio and writing some more new songs. Amazing. And what's your favourite toy from your youth? Because mine definitely has to be either a Barbie doll or a Polly Pocket. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm a bit of a serious collector. So Ooh. I've got some major toys in my collection. My favourite would probably be the, um, the prop replica of Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors. I don't know if you remember that movie, yes, but I've got I do. The, I've actually got the the animatronic plant which may or may not bite your finger off and it's probably something from the Gremlins or oh the old vintage Star Wars figures. Boys and their toys, eh? Uh, thank you very much to Mark Reed for joining us this afternoon and this is his new single for you now on BBC Radio Newcastle. This is Stop the Show which is out today. You can stop the show. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have a moment of your time? Make no mistake about it, you won't want to miss a single line. 